Imagine it's five years from now. You're sitting in your office or your kitchen or your chair or wherever you do your thinking, but it's five years from now. Looking back five years from now, what would you be thrilled about the things that you did right now that made the biggest change for you five years from now? The fact is, you've got time. You have time to build exactly what you want to build, whether it's an amazing website or to create a beautiful book or to build your message or to get your story out into the world. You have time. And the truth is, someone could take away your car, someone could take away your house or your 401k or your IRA or your savings or your boat or your vacation home, and you can get it all back. In fact, you can get it all back faster than you got it the first time around. But if someone takes away just one minute of your time, you'll never get it back ever again. Today on Ed Talks Live, we're going to talk about your time. We're going to talk about your daily routine. We're going to talk about your morning routine, and we're going to talk about your weekly routine. And together, by the time we're done, you're going to have the tools to get more done in less time with less waste, finally allowing yourself the freedom to enjoy life. Welcome to this episode of Ed Talks Live. All right, hey, welcome to the show. My name is Ed Rush, five-time number one best-selling author and former F-18 fighter pilot. Today, we're going to roll up our sleeves and talk about how to flat out get it done. You know, a lot of the podcasts I listen to, the hosts talk a lot about morning routines, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about daily routines or weekly routines or even evening routines. And so we're going to spread the uh, the dough out into the corners of the tray today. And we're going to talk about how you can flat out get more done in less time with less waste, because here's the thing. You only have a certain amount of time. I mean, look, we are rushing towards our ultimate end at exactly 60 minutes per hour. That's the reason why the word time management doesn't even exist. I mean, think about it for a second. You can't manage time. You can't speed it up. You can't slow it down. But what you can do is make the best use of every minute you've been given. Now, years ago, probably five, six years ago, I set out on a quest. My quest was very simple. I wanted every single minute of every day to be a purposeful minute. That meant the time that I was asleep, I wanted it to be purposeful. The time that I woke up, the first thing that happened in the morning, I wanted that to be purposeful. The way that I made my breakfast in the morning, I wanted that to be purposeful. The things that I was thinking about as I was going from my home into my office. I wanted that to be purposeful. What happened during the days when I'm sitting in front of my computer and working, that should be purposeful. I wanted everything to be purposeful. I'm talking about down to the fiction novels I read, purposeful. And I can't say that I'm 100% of the way there, but I can tell you I'm a lot farther than I was before. My goal, making things purposeful, had a purpose. It's because I have a goal of being able to change the world with a message or a story and an an experience. I wanna see and look back five years from now, but also 50 years from now and see the world a different place because of my influence in the world. And that means that you need to use your time wisely. Now, a lot of time management tools and a lot of time management systems are very tight. They're restrictive in a lot of ways, but the one that I'm going to teach you today is going to give you more freedom because the truth is, When you make best use out of your time, you create more freedom, you create more joy, you have more time to connect with family members and the ones that you love. And so today we're going to talk about your time. And I've got uh, three main areas we're going to talk about. I'm going to go actually in reverse today, weekly routine, then daily routine, then morning routine, not the other way around. And then I'm going to leave some time for your questions. Now, if you just joined us, this is Ed Talks, How to Dominate Your Day by starting with your morning. My name is Ed Rush, and I'm gonna share some of my productivity tools and hacks that I learned really at first in the cockpit of the F-18 and how I brought those into business. But before I do that, I wanna say hello to so many of our friends in chat. By the way, if you haven't logged in, click over there there to the right on YouTube or just below on Facebook comments uh, and say hello. (laughs) We got a whole group of folks. um, I had, let's see, who is this? Way early on, uh, Roy. Five, seven minutes before the show, Roy said, this is my first comment. I love it, dude. Uh, and Sheree, boom, right in their second comment, staying safe in Yorktown. What's up, Jim Butts? Good to see you, Terry, as well. Uh, 
uh, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, Barry, from sunny Palm Springs, California. It's not a bad place to self-isolate, Barry, I have to tell you. What's up, Dennis? <laughs> uh, happy e Ed and e tears. I like that. Then God made Oregon, and it was very good. I like that. It's very good. Uh, Delisa, welcome to the show. Aaron Miller, missed a couple last week. Hey, you can't miss any, dude. You got to be here. I'm just kidding. Every day. Uh, at least catch up on it. Sally said, happy Monday. Oh, man, I have got a week prepared for you. This week is going to be awesome. I'm going to show you in a minute who's coming in this week. What's up, John? Aubrey, good to see you as well. Where did I just lose you? There we go. David Zetz, big thank you to David Zetz. He wrote a great uh, post on Instagram. I read it this morning just as I was getting ready for the show. Made a quick comment, dude. I'm going to share it to my uh, timeline uh, today. Uh, thank you for that. If you're not following him, it's at Coach Zets uh, on Instagram. Wendell, uh, what's up, dude? From Houston, Robert, my man. Good to see you. Diana, how are you? She found a monarch blood butterfly cocoon in the garden this morning. It's that time of year. So that means they're coming back this away. Uh, what's up, Robert? It is the best place to be Monday through Friday. Denise says, good morning from BC. Hello, Storms Kenpo, my man. That's a little karate studio. I like it. I mean, he's getting better, getting better. I know I know. there's no kids in the studio right now, but we're getting better. I love it. Ed, Dr. Ed, good to see you. Matt, as well. Sabi, Charles, welcome again. Hey, Gabrielle, welcome to the show from Ecuador. We're going international, baby. We've got uh, Britain. We've got Vancouver. Uh, Nobby usually checks in from Australia, and now we're going south to Ecuador. What's up, Mike Toy? Good to see you, buddy. Paul Bingham from Texas, which is almost international, by the way. Uh, and Ben, good to see you. All right, welcome. So today we're going to talk about how to dominate your day. If you just joined us, and I know uh, an email just went out to my list, so I know a whole bunch of you are just uh, jumping on. Today is Monday. We're talking about how to dominate your day, starting with your morning. Uh, today or this week, I've got a huge week planned for you. I'm bringing in some of my favorite guests on some specific topics. And for those of you who, who are watching your first Ed Talks Live, some of the guests that we've had in the past, I'm bringing back again this week and next week to go deeper into some of their content. One of them, uh, by the way, is Marquetta Breslin. If you missed our show on social media uh, tips, uh, Marquetta's understanding and knowledge of social media is so deep. She's the person that I go to. If I have questions on social media, I pick up the phone and call her or her husband, Ricky, okay? Uh, and so she's gonna come in tomorrow and talk about Instagram hacks to grow your business. Now, on Wednesday, Jonathan Sprinkles, uh, who I believe is one of the best present presenters in the world, uh, has a has a, a tome on connection. And we're going to talk about connecting after COVID, the new rules for building trust and closing, closing sales. I was on a mastermind call with one of my friends in their mastermind groups last week. Uh, and, 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 and the question people were asking was, what should I do because of COVID and this? And I was saying, look, if you're adjusting to COVID-19, that happened a month ago. Your goal now is to look into the future and see where the puck is going and skate to the puck, as Wayne Gretzky said. And so we're going to talk uh, with Jonathan on Wednesday about connecting after COVID. By the way, moving some days around this week, so just hang with us and be here every day. Some of these may shuffle just a little bit. Then on Thursday, one of my friends is named Scott Zimmerman. Scott is a former executive at General Electric, uh, one of the smartest and most connected guys on the planet. Uh, and he's teaching uh, on leadership right now, and he's got some of the most transformative uh, teachings that I've seen in a long time. So on Thursday, we're going to talk about how to raise and train leaders. And then this Friday, we're going to go back to the Ask Me Anything show and just have a blast. We had a good time last week doing that, and it, I didn't even get all the questions answered. So I'm going to do that again uh, this week. Make sure you dial it in, whatever you do, uh, to Ed Talks live every single day, 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern, to dial it in. Look, at some point, we're all going to get outside of our bunkers. And when you do, you want to be better, faster, and stronger. Okay? so. If you just joined us, my name is Ed Brush. We are in a show called How to Dominate Your Day Starting with Your Morning. Uh, and I'm going to start the, uh, in the opposite direction. So most of the time when people talk about productivity, they start in the morning, but we're going to actually go backwards in a moment. And we're going to start talking about your week. But let me just take you back in time <laughs> about 14 years ago. Uh, I got out of the Marine Corps. So it was 2006, 2007 when I was transitioning out of the Marine Corps into business. And it was at th that time that I was building an online program. My very first business was an information product 
to teach young men and women how to be pilots in the military. I wrote a little book and I had a series of CDs that I sold for $97 online. And I had a little $30 a month, a membership club that grew from a $14 sale up until about $150,000 a year at its peak. Now, I don't have the business anymore. I sold it several, several years ago for brand management conditions, really, or considerations, really. But something interesting happened as I came out of the Marine Corps. I was an F-18 pilot. Some of you know that. Most of you know that. Uh, this helmet right behind me was a helmet that I flew uh, for about 11 years in the military. So I was an F-18 pilot. And as a pilot, I had gotten really good at doing things fast. Now, as you can imagine, the F-18 itself flies really fast. I'm talking like way past the speed of sound. But we used to do these missions. And at the height of my career, I was one of the leading instructors in the entire Marine Corps for some of these large package attacks that we used to do. When we used to get into training, we'd have 20, 30, 40 airplanes that we were leading down range in these big training missions. And sometimes, you know, we would go off and do it in combat. But these huge training missions, we'd have 20, 30, 40 airplanes. And in certain cases, I was in charge of all of those airplanes. And we would have 12, 15 enemy airplanes that we were fighting against in simulated training. During this time, uh, I was using all of my faculties to be able to manage all of the things that were going on. For example, we had one, two, in certain cases, three radios. I had a navigational system, a forward-looking infrared, a radar display. I had my heads-up display that was telling me where I was going. I had my wingman who was right next to me. Then I had my three and four in my division that I was in charge of. And then I had maybe five or 10 other divisions that I was uh, working with. Some were out in front doing surface-to-air suppression. Some were behind uh, bringing weapon systems to bear, and I needed to know where all they where they all were in terms of timing and location. And during that time, we were tracking the enemy and shooting our missiles downrange, and then defending against their missiles, and then coming back in. And then we would come into these dogfights where there would be five or six different airplanes in the sky at any given time, and we'd be fighting and shooting missiles across and trying to keep track of all that. And then we would escape out of that dogfight, hit the target, and then come home. And during that time. We would do intercepts and we would be flying at about eight or nine miles a minute, up to 10 miles a minute, while the enemy was flying to us at up to 10 miles a minute. That's 20 miles a minute worth of closure. That's 1,200 miles an hour. And during this time, I was managing a whole bunch of co tasks in the cockpit. It was almost like in, uh, in, in the movie Matrix. Remember when Neo was like slowing down, the bullets were flying past him? It was almost like that. Time would just shoo, slow down and then all of a sudden, everything would get done. And I was so proficient at that at the height of my career. And then I got out of the military and I started working to build this business online. And what I realized was that everything was going so slowly. It was like I was checking my email until two o'clock in the morning. You know, I was, I was constantly distracted by things. And all of a sudden I realized I was really good in the cockpit at doing things quite fast. But then when I got into business, it was like I was stuck. My feet were stuck in quicksand. And it was at that point that I realized I needed to go backwards. I needed to go back into the cockpit to understand how did we train ourselves in the cockpit? And I brought that into the business world and began to train myself the same way. Let me talk quickly about how, we, how I trained in the cockpit. In the cockpit, this is what we used to do. So for example, the very first time I got into an airplane, I had an instructor in my airplane who was teaching me about the landing pattern. I was in a little T-34 and I was going around the landing pattern with the instructor, listening to the communications that he was doing that day and watching as he was coming into land and, and taking back off again. And then we switched places. I sat in the front, my instructor sat in the back. And then I went ahead and tried to basically kill myself like eight times on my first eight landings. I remember, uh, one of my very first landings, you steer the airplane with your feet, not with your, uh, not with the controls, with your hands. And you know, in a car, you <laughs> turn left, turn right, but in an airplane, it's your feet. Well, it's hard to get used to that when you're in training. And I remember at one point I landed, I was going off to the right. There was a sign off to the right of the runway. I was headed right for that sign. And I was trying to turn the airplane with my hands like you would normally do a car. And my very calm instructor in, in the back seat was going, steer with your feet, steer with your feet. Steer with your feet, steer with your feet, steer with your feet. And then all of a sudden he takes the airplane, <laughs> just takes off just before we actually hit the sign. So so basically in the cockpit, you uh, try to kill yourself like eight to 15 times before you ever learn anything. But you know what? You learn it. And then eventually you learn the communication. And then you're subconsciously competent at 
landing an airplane and doing the communication. And the next thing you know, you're doing aerobatic maneuvers. And the next thing you know, you're doing aerobatic maneuvers while talking on the radio. And next thing you know, you're doing aerobatic maneuvers while fighting another airplane. And the next thing you know, you're doing aerobatic maneuvers talking on the radio while fighting two airplanes. The next thing you know, it's two against two. And then it's four against two. And then it's four against four. And next thing you know, it's 40 against 20. In the military, we just train and train and train until you're subconsciously competent at one task. And then you can move on to the next task. And so I went back to the cockpit and learned this is how we train things. Then I came forward into the business world and began to train myself in a certain way. Now, I can tell you with full disclosure, it worked, okay? I was able to go from that company to at one point running four companies simultaneously, very successfully, growing my income initially into the six-figure range and then into the seven-figure range while working less. For most of last year, I worked about two and a half days of actual work per week running a successful business. And I can tell you that you can do the same, but you have to train yourself to be able to get things done at this level so that you can execute at this level, okay? So today, we're gonna start to peel back the onion to talk about how to dominate your day. And by the time we're done, you are going to have some tools that you can implement in your business and in your life so that you can get more done in less time with less waste, allowing yourself a little bit more freedom to enjoy life, okay? So while I do that, I wanna welcome, some of you just joined us by the way, this is Ed Talks, how to dominate your day, starting with your My name is Ed Rush, welcome to the show. Uh, if you just joined us by the way, say hello in chat, that's over to the right and also uh, below. Some of you have made some really great con uh, uh, comments. Um, thank you. This is, where did I just see? We had one. Baghdad, my man. I love, oh, sorry, Su Suzette. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't see your name before I said. All right, Suzette, that is so cool. From Iraq, we've got Ecuador today, Iraq, Australia, uh, Canada, and uh, England. So I love it. Dr. Wendy Lee, good to see you. Um, Richard McLean on Facebook uh, says that it paused. I just got a notification. Uh, and Felicia, you may want to go make a comment for me over on Facebook. I just got a notification that Facebook is not connecting properly. So if you could tell the Facebook people to come over here to uh, YouTube, uh, you can see that as well. Barry said, uh, Dr. Ed, and when Barry says, moving into personal business, like having to design to build your own airplane, it's totally true. Hey, Teresa, good to see you from Texas. Coach Gary as well. Francine, haven't seen you for a while. Lovely to see you as well. Hello, Marquetta, my guest for uh, tomorrow. And Jim Butts, unconsciously, the goal is unconscious or subconscious competence. All right, so I'm going to jump up here on the board and we're going to start teaching some of this stuff. By the way, if you just joined us, this is how to dominate your day, starting with your morning. My name is Ed Rush, former F-18 fighter pilot, five-time number one best-selling author. And we're gonna go backwards today. So I'm gonna start with your weekly routine, and then we're, we're gonna get into your daily routine, and then we're gonna wrap up talking about your morning routine. I will have some time at the end of today's show for questions, uh, and I'll let you know when that is. You're gonna just tell me your question uh, in the last few, uh, maybe five, seven minutes of the show. I'm, I'm gonna get into some rapid fire Q&A, all right? So let me jump up to uh, the whiteboard. And hang on a second, I clicked the wrong button. Uh, jump up to the whiteboard here and we'll start taking, uh, or we'll start uh, pounding through uh, some of the com content. And by the way, if you just joined us, please say hello in chat. Uh, tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you do, especially if you haven't joined us before. Uh, and if you're new to the show, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right here on YouTube or Facebook, we go live for Ed Talks Live, the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. All right, so I'm gonna start talking about weekly routine. By the way, a whole bunch of folks just joined us on the show, so if you did, my name's Ed Rush. This is how to dominate your day, starting with your morning. Okay, so syllabus for today is week, then day, then morning. Okay, we're gonna talk about each of those three things in turn, but let's start with your weekly routine. now. The reason why the weekly routine is, I think, the most important routine to talk about, more important than the day, even more important than the morning, is because of what I discovered in, in about 300 plus one-on-one -on -one coaching days. So I have a series of questions that I will typically ask to my coaching clients of uh, the way that it normally works. Some of you, by the way, on chat have been with me on a one-on-one -on -one coaching day is you come to San Diego, uh, we have a beautiful meeting space that you sit down and you come and sit down 
uh, and we get all ready to go. And I give you a little bit of a brief on the coaching day. And then I ask a series of questions. And that series of questions usually goes from about 35 minutes to about 55 minutes, depending on the direction that we go. And essentially what I'm doing is the same thing that a auto mechanic would do or a computer diagnostic uh, would do is I'm simply getting a feel for the business, getting a feel for the entrepreneur and trying to find out what your goals are, what your objectives are, what activities you're typically doing. Because my goal with my coaching members typically are three things, a greater income, a greater impact to share their message with the world, and then a better lifestyle. Most of the people that come to me are working too much and they want to work less but make more. And that's possible. It's just a way that you structure your business. And in that series of questioning, I typically ask my coaching members, I go, now how many days a week are you working? And I tell them, I define work by any work activity. So if you're doing social media, if you're doing checking your email, uh, if you're having meetings, if you're jumping on the phone to talk to clients, if you're troubleshooting or solving problems, those are all work activities. So how many days a week? And, and for the most part, in over 300 one-on-one -on -one coaching days, the majority, probably 98% of the people that I work with would at this point roll their eyes and then sigh and then go seven. <laughs> and I go, how many hours do you think? Like 40 hours a week? They're like, no, probably more like 60 or 70. Okay. So the baseline for the people that I was working with uh, were seven days. And I will tell you that 100% of the people who came to me with seven days left with an objective to make it at least five days, but we started with six. Okay. So let's start with a fundamental uh, discussion about the week. Okay. So there are seven days in the week. Now you already know that. So this actually is like ancient history, okay? It's kind of interesting, right? It's just this random number almost. I mean, it's not five or 10, and we have a we have a, a number system based on 10. You think that we would use 10, but we have seven days in the week. Now, you could argue where that came from, and there's a lot of different websites online that will have this discussion, but what I can simply tell you is that seven is at least 4,000 years old, and probably more like six or 7,000 years old, okay? now. I'm going to take you back into some history. So there was this group of people, you've probably read about them or heard about them. Uh, they were called the Hebrews. It was the nation of Israel. And for a long time, they were in captivity in a place called Egypt. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the way the Egyptians treated their slaves, but typically the Egyptians didn't treat their slaves very well at all. Okay. Uh, what that means is if you are a captive, in a place like Egypt, uh, 2000 BC, uh, if you there was a seven day week, you were gonna work about seven of those days. Uh, in fact, you probably would never ever get off. I mean, you know, at night you might be able to eat and go to sleep and then wake up and be a slave again. But as a slave in Egypt back in 4000 BC, you pretty much worked seven days a week. Now, through some events, uh, they were set free out of Egypt. You remember, maybe watched uh, that movie um, uh, with uh, Yul Brenner in it, you know, that talks about the Ten Commandments and Moses. But they're set free uh, through some miraculous events, according to the history. And they get out and they're wandering through the desert. And all of a sudden, they receive a new set of rules. Uh, and those rules that they received, you're familiar with, those are the Ten Commandments. And one of the commandments, actually the fourth commandment, uh, says now on uh, here's the here's the new rule. It says on six days you're going to labor and work, and on the seventh day, which is that last day or the first day, depending on your how you're counting it, you're just going to rest. Okay, that was the rule. Now, for somebody who's been working seven days a week for basically their entire life, this one day was a gift. That was like, wait a second. I get a day off? Are you kidding me? This is crazy, okay? That one day right there was a gift. Now I wanna take you back into the conversation with my coaching clients. I say to them, how many days a week are you working? And they say, seven days. And I go, well, that's fine. Our objective now is to get that down to six, but then eventually to five. And you would think that the coming out of Egypt, man, those people would look at me and be like, thank you, Ed, thank you. Now, their spouses, a lot of the spouses were in the coaching day and they would, like spouses would always say thank you. But for some reason, the entrepreneurs would almost never say thank you. In fact, what they would do most of the time is like they would argue back. No, 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 you don't understand. And you don't understand my business. And you don't, and, then, and then for like 10 minutes, they would like argue with me as to why they absolutely needed to work uh, seven days. But you know what? An amazing thing happened. 
because all of those people were financially invested into working with me. Eventually, they took my advice. So I'll take you to one of my clients who was an attorney. Her name was Lisa, uh, who was absolutely convinced that she had to, had to positively work seven days because the assessments that she was doing on the phone were so fundamental to changing, uh, to growing her business. Well, sure enough, after a year of working together, all those assessments that she used to do were 93% of them were being done by her team members, creating a massive amount of freedom in her life and allowing her to take this one day. But you know what was interesting? The cart came before the horse. She took this day and then she began to systematize the rest of her business. Okay, so if you're gonna work with me, one of the things that we're gonna talk about, and it can be any day of the week, okay? This doesn't have to be a religious thing, although typically I take my day on Sunday. I typically recommend that you at least take one day that's off email, off social media, off anything having to do with work. If somebody wants to do a call, do it on Monday or Saturday or whatever day you choose to take off, just don't do it on that day. So for example, yesterday, we're recording this on Monday. Yesterday was Sunday and Sunday in our household, I'm not working, first of all, you don't work Saturday either. The second thing is because of what's going on in the world right now, we're right in the middle of this coronavirus pandemic. Sunday, we started calling a CV3 day in my home. What that meant was we're not going to talk about this virus either. In fact, yesterday on, on Instagram, I said, I have a challenge for you, 24 hours without mentioning a virus. It's amazing how, how, many, how much of our day is consumed by this one thing, okay? So the first recommendation is to take one day off. Now, interestingly, historically, there have been a lot of cultures that have tried to get away from this seven-day routine. French Revolution, 1793, once they overthrew the king, the French were like, let's get rid of everything. Let's get rid of religion. Let's get rid of the calendar. The French went to a 10-day calendar. And you know what? It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. They went back to seven really quickly. The Russians in 1929 were like, forget this seven-day thing. <laughs> it's based in some uh, 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 belief system that we don't believe in. Let's get rid of it. They took a five-day work week, and it didn't work. Okay. Interestingly, I don't have time to get into this. This seven day, the seven day cycle. Interestingly, in the if you read the ancient texts, there's a seven year cycle too, where every seventh year God said, "Look, just take, let the land have its rest." And the funny thing about that is, it took until the mid 1900s till we realized, you know what? About every seven years, you should let that land not grow something. It's actually good for the land to revitalize its nutrients. And look, if it's good for the land, it's good for you too, okay? So one day a week. Now, what I found when I started taking that one day a week is that when I took a pause and I stopped actually working like labor work, like real hard work, when I took a pause, all the ideas started flowing in. It was like my subconscious mind was just waiting, just waiting for a break from the frenetic activity for all the ideas to start to flow. And all the ideas would just flow because your subconscious mind was actually listening and aware now for the first time. Some of my best dreaming happens on Sunday night because I've just given my mind the time off and then all of a sudden all the ideas uh, come in. Okay, so first recommendation, in your seven-day week, one day off, okay? And ideally, it's the same day every single week. And when I mean off, I mean don't check your email, you're not on social media. I'm saying like off, 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 okay? Now, some of you may notice I, I, there are posts that go on seven day a week, seven days a week in my business. That's because I set it to go ahead of time, right? So I have automation that creates all of that, okay? Now, the way that I typically do my week is this. I will typically, of the seven days, I will actually work an actual five of those days. My typical work a block is nine to five, okay? And what this means in nine to five is I draw pretty clean lines. What that means is when I'm done at five, I'm done, okay? If I need to work a little late, I'll go to six, but when I'm done, I'm done. That, that means I'm not like back in the office checking my email. It means I'm not like jumping on the phone real quick. I'm not checking text, text messages. In fact, most of you who have my phone number know that if you try to text me after five or six, my phone's probably off, okay? So I typically work five and then I take one day off, okay? And then I have one day just to catch up on stuff. Like for example, Saturday, I don't actually work in the business, but I'm like working around the yard, play baseball with the kids and try to catch up, catch up on some stuff, okay? Um, again, includes email and social media. Now, the last thing I'll tell you about the weekly routine, uh, just some quick recommendations for you, is that I typically make one day, uh, I, what I would consider like a catch-all day. So this day for me 
is usually Monday, right? So if I've got a weekly training, I used to do weekly training online, that would be on Monday. Uh, if I have calls to do with clients, I typically schedule that on Monday. Normally, I schedule my client calls anytime between 2 and 4.30 on Mondays. That way, my entire week isn't broken up, broken up, broken up, broken up by 30-minute calls. I stack them all into one spot, okay? This, by the way, comes from, remember I told you all these ideas that I got, a lot of the ideas I got out of the cockpit? So let me tell you one of the, one of the mistakes that somebody makes during an emergency. Guys will get on the runway. This happened to me too. I had a, a, I had a um, catastrophic engine failure about halfway down the runway on a takeoff. I was in Miramar. Flying down the runway, full throttle, full afterburner. I was at about 110 knots, which is essentially about 20 to 30 knots away from taking off. It's fast. Okay, I'm at 110 knots, which is like 120 miles an hour. And all of a sudden, out of my left ear right here, boom! It's like this huge explosion, and I don't have any idea what it is. I immediately pull the throttles all the way back, which I was past uh, something that we call refusal speed. Normally, I wouldn't have pulled the throttles back, but it was my first reaction. I pulled it back. And as I pulled the throttles back, I thought to myself, hmm, you might have just blown a tire. And if you blow a tire... The airplane at about 80 knots becomes uncontrollable on the ground. So the best strategy, if you've blown a tire, is to go full throttle, take off, fly back around, and do an arrested landing using the the um, the cables that are across the runway and the hook. So as I pulled the throttle back, I thought to myself, oh, man, you just blew a tire, dude. And pulling your throttles back is the worst decision. And I went to push them up again, and I remembered the rule. The rule is you get one you get one choice on a runway. Because what's happened in the past is guys have been on the runway. They take off, they hear a noise, they pull the throttles back. Then they think, oh, I might have blown a tire, then they push the throttles forward. But then they think, maybe I blew an engine, then they pull the throttles back. And guys have literally done this all the way down to the end of the runway and run off the runway with a bad airplane. So you get one decision when you're going that fast. I pulled the throttles back and took my chances. Slowed down, realized I hadn't blown a tire, realized I had an engine problem, came off the runway and was totally fine having made one decision. Well, in business and productivity, it's the same way, okay? So like today, I'm doing this show. When I get off, I've got some promotions that I'm going to be doing this afternoon, and I will sit down in an undistracted space for two to three straight hours without incoming phone calls, without incoming text messages, without incoming emails. Focus, 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 then take a break, and then focus in on your email, okay? So for example, I'm just doing some fast tips here, but if you have your email sitting in front of you all day long, you got something wrong. You get your text messages sitting in front of you all day long. You have something wrong because, look, nobody would – like I wouldn't be flying in a mission in an F-18 trying to fight against a MiG-29 and get a Facebook message and be like, oh, hey, what's up, Facebook? You know, like I, would, I wouldn't do that. And the reason I wouldn't do that is because I've got a mission. Same for you when it comes to productivity. You have a mission. Okay? So – if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. This is How to Dominate Your Day, starting with your morning. Now, I'm going to catch up real quick in chat. If you haven't joined us, chat is over to the right or just below. I don't know if Facebook's getting back on, um, but it doesn't look like Facebook is on. Hey, what's up? Hello from Brazil. Man, we've got like an international audience today, man. I love it. Um, let's say hello to some of our friends. Hello, Dr. Wendy Lee. Good to see you. Um, who else did I miss? Teresa, Coach Gary, Nobby from us. I told you. All over the world today, baby. I love it. Uh, Jim Butts, consciously. Con oh, he's. I showed that one already. Hello, Blaine from sunny Scottsdale. Welcome to the show. Uh, glad to have you as well. So, today we are talking about your productivity. All right. So, uh, what I'm sharing with you are just some of my own productivity tips to get the most out of your day and to get the most out of your time. Now, in a minute or two, I'm going to jump over onto chat. Lanika from Can Canada. What's going on, Michael from Detroit? Glad to have you. Okay, in a moment, I'm going to jump into daily routine, and then I'm going to talk about morning routine. Okay, but before I do that, I will tell you that in about 14 minutes, I'm going to jump into chat and answer your questions. Okay, uh, so we'll have a little rapid fire uh, round of questions, and I can already tell we're going to do a second round on this topic because I got way more here to teach than I've got time uh, to teach it. But we just went through weekly routine. Okay, seven days, uh, seven days a week, at least one day off, uh, and then focus your time in the rest of um, the rest of your uh, time, okay? So again, I'm gonna be at, taking your questions and I've got a really great resource for you uh, coming right up at the end of this uh, next discussion. By the way, this is another great resource. If you haven't got your copy of 21 Day Miracle, now's a great time to get it. It's edrushbook.com is the website. So I think I've got it actually here someplace. Hang on, 
Uh, there it is. Boom. Uh, edrushbook.com is the website to jump on there and um, grab that. It's like 99 cents on Kindle. Uh, look, books aren't where I make my money. Okay. So books are where I share a message. So you can get that right there. Uh, now let's go into daily. All right. So let's do this real quick. If you just joined us, this is How to Dominate Your Day Starting with Your Morning. My name is Ed Rush, a five-time number one bestselling author, former F-18 fighter pilot. I'm teaching you my strategies for dominating the day based on what I learned in the cockpit. So a lot of the strategies are coming out of the cockpit to show you how to get more done with less time, with less waste, finally allowing yourself the freedom to enjoy life. I just covered a weekly routine. Today, now I'm going to go into talking about a daily routine, and then I'm going to talk about morning routine, and then I'm going to take some questions, okay? So if you're watching this on video, we do this show live Monday through Friday, 10 in the morning, 1 in the afternoon. Uh, and come and join us and jump in the chat and say hello. I've got a huge week planned for you. We're going to get into social media tips uh, tomorrow. Okay, so let's talk about daily routine. I'm actually going to take you to the end of the day first, okay? Now, most people, when they end their day, they end their day like this. Whew, man, it's a lot of stuff, and I got a lot of stuff left, okay? That's typically the way that somebody ends. Like like they would end like a boxing match, you know, having just gotten gotten beat up, Okay. I will tell you that there are two things that you need to do at the end of the day, okay? Every single day, I don't care what day it is and how great the day was or how hard the day was, there's two things you need to do, okay? The first thing is you need to celebrate. Now, I don't mean like, you know, pound like 17 beers. I'm just saying like, celebrate the fact that you had a good day. Here's the reason why I celebrate at the end of every single day, all right? I went to SeaWorld. And I, I don't look, I don't know what you think about the ethics of this. I'm not... I'm not discussing that today. I'm just telling you. I went to SeaWorld, and I saw they have dolphins that can jump through hoops. That's amazing. They have dolphins that can, like, walk on the water. That's pretty cool. Like, people taught dolphins to walk on top of water, okay? And the reason that they taught them how to do that is because they gave them fish. <laughs> they gave them positive reinforcement for their activities. So think about the average entrepreneur. The average entrepreneur works hard, you know? You work hard, but at the end of the day, you have this to-do list. And in your to-do list, you've got like 50 things on your to-do list. And in a, in a great day, you, have, you got like 12 done. In an okay day, you got like 10 done. And in a bad day, you got like six done of your 50 things on your to-do list. And so at the end of the day, what do you look at? You got 12 things done. You had a great day. But you have 50 things on your to-do list. What do you look at? Yeah, you look at the 38 things that are left. In other words, at the end of every day, as an entrepreneur, we negative re reinforce ourselves. I don't know why we do that. Like, think about that. Every single day, you're like, gosh, I still have a lot to do. You're always still going to have a lot to do. Okay, so the first thing you need to do at the end of every day is take just a couple minutes, okay, and look at what you accomplished and be like, good job. It was a good job. You did good. Like, think about that. So here's mine. This is my goal. I try to get at least three things done. So in the beginning of the day, I'm going to make a list. I'm going to show you that list in just a second. And as long as I do three things, it's a dominated day, baby. It is a one day. Today was a good day. Three things. I'm going to set that bar right there at three. Because look, if I do three things today, that's 15 things this week, right? Over the 50-week year, what is that? 50 times 50. I don't even know. It's a lot, okay? It's a lot. 50 times 15. What is that? 1,400, 20. I don't know. It's a lot of things. Someone do the math in chat. I wasn't planning on doing math in public. Look, I'm a Marine. That means that I was not the sharpest tool in the ship. Okay, so the first thing you do at the end of every day is you celebrate and whatever that means for you. Okay, go upstairs, get some hugs out of your kids, you know, uh, grab a, a glass of wine. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Whatever it is for you, make sure that you stop, stop for a moment and just be like, you know what? Good job. Because much like the dolphin, you're just positively reinforcing the fact that you did a good thing. Okay, and by the way, if you're like depressed all the time as a business owner, this is probably one of the reasons why you're holding yourself to a standard that you could never meet. Okay, so just be kind to yourself a little bit, like be gentle, be kind, like you're kind to everyone else, be kind to you, you know, be kind to yourself and celebrate, okay? The next technique that I use at the end of the day is something that I call squeezing the sponge, all right? Now, here's the way this works. Your subconscious mind is able to manage and hold on to a lot of things for you. And right now, your subconscious mind is juggling quite a few things. And your subconscious knows that it's in charge of keeping these things in front of you 
until you actually take action on them because that's the job you've given your subconscious mind to do. But what happens is your subconscious is juggling so many things that like as you're falling asleep at night, just as you're falling asleep, you'll be like, oh man, I forgot to. And then you have to go off and do something, right? Have you ever experienced that before? Just when you're falling asleep, all of a sudden you remember something that you forgot there. So reason for that, just as you're falling asleep, it's the first time your subconscious mind has had an opportunity to like say hello and to like catch up with you. And it's gonna tell you some urgent things, okay? So what I think about at the end of the day is I think of my mind as this huge sponge that's got all these tasks that I need to do. And my job is to take that sponge and just, just kind of wring it dry just a little bit. What that means is that I'm going to make a list. I'm going to create all these different projects and different businesses and different things that I'm working on. And I'm just going to make a to-do list. It's just all the things that I know that I'm supposed to do. I don't need to do it all tomorrow, but I'm going to put it all down. Everything that my subconscious says, I'm just going to put it down. I'm just going to write it all down. And that way, if I write it down in a, in a reliable recording format, which is a little piece of paper in front of me or a sticky note or a journal, someplace that your subconscious knows, yeah, he's got it or she's got it. Okay. Once you do that, once your subconscious knows that it's on paper, it's going to stop reminding you of those things because you got it. Okay. What, what that means is that by the end of the day, you're going to have celebrated, you're going to feel good about yourself. But the second thing is you're going to have all that junk out of your head. And this is a really important step. Now, I'm going to start the next day with that list. So I'm going to start with that list, okay? And I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, okay? Just for time, we can go much, much deeper into this. I'm going to start with the list of the things that I dumped the night before, all those things, okay? I'm going to go through that list and write, number one, that's the most important thing. Number two, that's the next most important thing. Number three. So I'm going to write the list down. I'm going to say this is first, this is second, this is third, in order of the priority of impact in my business. And then for each of these tasks, I'm going to give them a time. This one should take me about 30 minutes. This one should take me about 45 minutes. And this one's going to take me about an hour. Okay, now let's say it's 930 and I start this one. When should I be done? 10. Boom. So I'm going to start a timer and I'm going to go, let's do it. Okay, and I'm going to start. And typically what happens, if I'm on a timer to get something done, I'm not going to check my email. I'm not going to check my test messages. I'm also not going to answer the phone, right? Because I'm getting something done. Then I'll take a break at the end of this one. Then I'll start this one and then this one, okay? Now, I went through that fairly quickly, right? Um, in terms of what, how I start and how I end the day. Uh, I don't have time to go super, super deep into this one, although in a future episode, I probably will, okay? I know I kind of just scratched the surface on a uh, daily routine. What I will tell you uh, very quickly and parenthetically is if any of what I just taught you, you're like, man, I could probably do that and get, get a lot more time back on my schedule. If anything that I just taught you interests you, you should know that I have a system, a full system called uh, the 21 Day Time Freedom Miracle. Okay, and here's the way this works. It's an online course that I created where you put in five minutes a day. Okay, so all you do is you wake up, you watch either watch a video, listen to the audio, or read. You can read the transcript. Uh, and the outline of the notes. Either way, it's five minutes a day, and there's one implementation item per day, okay, for 21 days. And by the time 21 days is over, you're a time master, okay? So quickly, I'm going to share my screen real quick and show this to you, and I'm going to give you an awesome deal. All right, so check it out. You can see, see that right there? So that's the 21-day time freedom miracle. This is the course, by the way, the website it's at the top if you re read it closely. I'll write it in the chat too. It's edrush.com slash 21 day. Super easy to remember. Uh, and inside this course, this is the look of the course. It's all digital. So you're going to get access to it right away as soon as you uh, invest in it. Um, you're going to get my system for getting more done. And it's tw five minutes a day, 21 days. And then there's a whole bunch of cool bonuses. Like for example, I went on board an aircraft carrier to show you some of the uh, productivity strategies that the Navy uses out there to be super efficient. Um, and like I said, there's a whole bunch of bonuses, but when you click on this, if you see, you see the normal price is 597, which by the way, is an awesome deal. Uh, what I did for this show, I'm going to do this for the first five people who want to buy this, by the way. Um, what I did was I created a coupon code and the coupon code is freedom. All right. So Delisa's is going to put that in the chat. Um, it is, uh, edrush.com. It is edrust.com slash 21 day. And the coupon code is the word freedom. All right, check this out. 
that takes this 597 course and makes it 197. <laughs> That's a pretty good deal, man. That's like 400 bucks off. Okay. Some of you have been asking about that. Now it's the time to get it if you're interested. Uh, 597 to 197 using the coupon code Freedom. Delisa's putting all that into chat. Okay. So I'm going to jump into morning routine in just a minute and I'm going to say hello to some of you who are in chat as well. Um, and by the way, if you just joined us from Facebook, I'm sorry that Facebook crashed today. Blame Facebook. Okay. At least we're on a lot. At least we're still live on YouTube. All right. So, um, maybe you should just watch over here from now on. All right. So let's do this. I'm going to take a sip of coffee and I'm going to tell you you're awesome. In just a minute, I'm going to take your questions on productivity. All right. So boom, before, you know, y'all were making fun of me like the first 10 shows. I would pick up my coffee and then I would talk and then I would put my coffee down and you're all like, he never drinks his coffee. So now, mm. ah, that's good coffee. All right, so Diana says, great stories, Ed, laughing and learning, having a schedule, always moving forward, having a to-do list and living in the moment, finding beauty everywhere, especially in the garden. <laughs> that is such a great, great comment. Thank you for that. All right, so let's get into daily routine. If you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. This is how to dominate your day, starting with your morning. We covered so far weekly routine, daily routine, morning routine. And we're just scratching the surface on some of these things. We could go deeper, which we will on a future show. Um, but if you want to go really deep, 21 Day Time Freedom Miracle is for you. All right? So let's talk about how to have a great morning. And I will tell you, you may be surprised at what you're just about to learn. All right? So if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. This is how to dominate your day, starting with your morning. Uh, and we're going to get into morning routine. Now, there is a trend in the personal development world, and the trend goes like this. You should get up early. No, mm -hmm. you should get up earlier. No, you should get up, like, really, really, really early. No, you should just never go to sleep, okay? What I will tell you is that for the most part, I think that that is an unhealthy trend. <laughs> here's why <laughs> you need to sleep you know like your body needs sleep you need deep sleep and you need REM sleep the scientists still haven't figured out exactly why we need all that stuff but you do okay and my goal is really simple I want to live I want to live a productive life out past 144 years old and I'm not even joking sometimes people laugh when I say that, and I have to tell you, if you have goals and people aren't laughing when you say the goals, you don't have big enough goals, okay? So 144 years is my goal. And what that means is you, you need to take care of your body. You need to eat right. Diana, like Diana says, you need to eat organic food grown in a garden, like in maybe your garden, you know? You need to have good vitamin levels. You need to have a good a movement routine, whatever that is for you, okay? And I'm not going to go deep into all that stuff. What I'm going to tell you is that you need to make sure that your body retains its shape and continues productively into a, a long age. For me, that's 144, okay? So I'm not a big like get up at five, uh, at like three in the morning kind of person. There are some days where I get up that early because uh, I'm on media back on the East Coast. There are some days I got to jump on an airplane and I, look, I get it, life happens. But assuming that, you know, like a, let's assume like a virus hits and you need to be at home all the time. This is a good time to begin to work on your morning routine. Okay, and there's two options on this. There's more than two, but there's two real options that I'm going to lay before you, and you can choose the one that you want. Okay, there's two options, and what I will tell you is use this as a tool. So, 21 Day Miracle fundamentally is a great tool for for trying things out and potentially building new habits. So, for example, right now I am on a 21 day sprint to wake up. With, with the number five on the beginning of the clock. So what that means for me is I set my alarm for 5.58 and I have to have my feet on the floor by 5.59, okay? I'm doing that for 21 days because I'm gonna I'm giving it a shot uh, just to see how it works with my body, with my family, with my routine. Now, full disclosure, I have four more days left on that. So I got to the end of the week. I committed to 21 days, so I'm doing 21 days. But when 21 days is over, I'm going back to the way I used to do it, okay? So I'm not gonna be getting up at five o'clock in the morning and I'm not going to be guilty about it, okay? I'm not going to feel bad about it. Everybody works in a different way, okay? So option one is you can wake up at the same time every day. Make it a time 
that you feel fits in with the rhythms of your day and your body. Okay, like I said, I'm trying, I'm trying 559. And it, I've been successful at it because I decided that I was going to do it. And of course, I just did it. Okay, so for me, that was 559. I think, Dennis, uh, you said you were doing 558 because he wanted to beat me by a minute or something. Uh, and he did successfully. Okay, so I did that for 21 days. So option number one is the same time. Okay, you know, you'll know that option one is beginning to work for you. Like, for example, I was waking up at 1 point, 6.30, 6.30, 6.30, 6.30, 6.30, 6.30. You know that option one is working for you when, like, on a Saturday when you don't have to like, have to wake up that early. At 6.30, you're like, wide awake, okay? Because training your body to wake up at the same time is healthy for your body, okay? So pick a time and make it the same time and try that same time for 21 days. If you want to be super hardcore about it, like be a Navy SEAL or something like that, do, do it at 3 in the morning or whatever. But, you know, eventually you're going to be like, I need to do it, like, a little later. Okay. So the same time is one option. Second time, second option. And I love this second one. And nobody talks about this. Okay. This one right here, trying this one will change everything for you. In my opinion, this is waking up whenever we wake up. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's, here's the way you do this. Your body. So first of all, you're, <laughs> you you can't do this in like a perfectly dark room. Typically, you have to let the day kind of get you awake. But here, here's what I discovered. Your body pretty much knows how much sleep you need. And you're going to wake up when you're done. Okay? So typically, I've done this for like the last year, maybe a year and a half. What I'll do is I'll go to sleep at a reasonable hour, 10, 10, 30, 11, that time frame. Okay? And then whenever I'm done sleeping, I just wake up. Some mornings, that's 5.30. Some mornings that's 7.30. Some mornings that's 8.15. Okay, so when I do this, typically what I do is I set an alarm, but my alarm is something that I call a backstop. And the backstop is this. So for example, I have a 10 o'clock show, 10 o'clock Pacific time show, Monday through Friday. So I can't sleep till like 10.15 because, you know, I have the show. So what I will typically do is I'll set my alarm for like 8.50. That way I know I can get up, grab some breakfast, do the show. But I almost never hit that. Normally, I get up about 7, 7.30, something like that. But I get up whenever my body says, hey, you know what, Ed? It's time to get out of bed. And then I just get out of bed. And I feel great having slept really well. And sometimes I wake up earlier and sometimes I wake up later. But usually I wake up around, you know, 6.45 to 7.30, something like that. And that's when I wake up. Okay? Last thing. And then I'm going to go uh, to your questions quickly in chat. Um, the number one first thing. Okay, and now this one is not optional. You have to do this for 21. I'm telling you, this will change everything for you. The first thing you do every morning when you wake up, I'm talking like before you get out of bed, before you do any, before you go to the bathroom, the first thing you do, the moment you wake up, say thank you. Okay, typically what I try to do is find two or three things to be thankful for. And I say it to God. You could say it however you want to. I say, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for my family. Thank you for this house. Thank you for this night's sleep. Thank you for the food that I'm about to eat. Thank you for the day that you've given me. Thank you for the people that are going to get to watch Ed Talks today. I just want to say thank you. I just start every day. Now, here's when I knew this started to work. About a year and a half ago, I had a dream. And the dream was, you know the dream right before you wake up? The dream right before I woke up. This is not exaggerated. I literally, right before I woke up, in my dream, I'm like, God, thank you. This day, thank you. And I said a whole list of thank you things, and then I woke up. It was in the dream, not the wake up part. It was in the dream. That's when you know you're training yourself. Okay. Gratitude changes everything. Look, sometimes you know you wake up and you're like, oh, can't believe I'm waking up today. <laughs> I'm kind of in a bad mood. This fixes a lot of that. All right. So I have more to teach on this. As usual, I wrote a longer notes. These are my notes, by the way. Some of you know I stick them right underneath the camera. These are my notes. I covered about half of that. <laughs> All right. So I guess that's just the way it is. I always, I don't know why I always think I can cover more. So I will do a part two on how to dominate your day. I've got more things in terms of what you do first thing, how to get into the zone, how to get your first hour, a whole bunch of stuff, extra stuff done that you wouldn't normally get done. But what I'm going to do uh, quickly is I'm going to jump onto this front camera here uh, and I'm going to take some fast questions. So if you haven't already done that, I haven't looked at chat, uh, but if you haven't done it, Jump into chat and uh, type your question. Put it in the form of the word question, uh, Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N with a little, um, what is it, a uh, semicolon. Uh, ask me your question, and we'll do a couple questions quickly. 
uh, and then we'll get it going. Nobby says, yeah, he's in Australia, so if he has to watch the live show, it starts at 3, just to go to bed early. <laughs> John Tuttle. And that's funny. You guys crack me up. Barry says, I woke up at 4.15 without an alarm. Number one is always gratitude that I've awakened to another day in my family. I love it. Um, for me, circadian rhythm is multiples of an hour and a half. Honoring my energy trough at night and energy peak in the morning seems to maximize my rest. Bam, that is good stuff. Uh, let's see. I want to see if I missed anything inside the chat. Da, 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 yep, sorry for you who lost me on Facebook. I'm going to blame Facebook on that. And so, you know, uh, when we stream live, we go to Facebook, uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter simultaneously. I actually streamed to a service called Twitch, but I've like had one view there in two, two months. So, hey, what are you going to do? Uh, and thousands and tens of thousands on YouTube. So, which is the reason why most of the chat happens here on YouTube. Um, Michael says, what is the link for your book? Yes, thank you for that. Always happy to answer that question. That is right below you in uh, the screen. And Delisa will put that in chat as well. It's www, oh, hang on, hang on, wrong one, wrong one. Don't do that. It's this one. Uh, www.edrushbook.com and um, Amazon's number one bestseller. I was a uh, number one business book on Amazon at one point, sold almost 30,000 copies of this thing. Uh, beautiful uh, following off of the book. And I will tell you, I do not price my books to make money. I put them at the lowest that Amazon lets me. So the ebook version is uh, 99 cents and the actual print version is like eight bucks. Amazon has tried so many times to get me to raise the price on this book. And every time I'm like, nope, because I'd rather have the person be able to get the book and maybe come to an event or something like that than, than maximize dollars on that. Um, good. Okay. Um, so let, let me do a couple quick questions. Um, oh, man, this is so cool. Thank you. I'm going to say thank you to somebody real quick. Uh, and again, I got a, just a couple minutes. We'll, we'll take some questions and then we'll get cranking in the rest of the week stuff. Um, thank you, Coach Gary. Grateful as hell, he says, for these daily trainings. Man, I'm, I'm having a blast too. Thank you, Diana. This is such a reason everybody's being all so nice. So we're, we're being grateful. I love it. <laughs> it's really, really great. The website, <clears throat> as Delisa said, is edrushbook.com. All right. I've got one more question, then I'll start wrapping it up unless there's any other questions, but we're going to, we're going to put the, um, we're going to land the airplane here uh, in just a moment. Mike Toy says, hold on. Hmm. That's a good coffee right there. Hey, you need a little help with your morning. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to do, I think I'm going to do a 21 day. Um, I do these, uh, but my whole, every, there's never a time I'm not doing a 21 day something. Okay. Uh, right now I'm in the middle of a fitness one. I'm in the middle of a, a dieting one. I'm in the middle of the wake up at 5.58 or feet on the floor by 5.59. And then I'm also praying for an hour a day. Um, those are all 21 days. And a lot of those are coming to the end this week. So I use this tool for almost everything in life. And I, I know I've been sitting here drinking coffee, but I think what I'm going to do is do tea for three straight weeks, 21 days. And so you'll see soon probably some tea in there. All right. So that's good. Barry says, your t oh, wait, hold on. Your T-shirt says it all. Yeah. That's <laughs> that. Zip Fizz is getting me going and has a bunch of vitamins. All right. So, um, Mike, I'll take this last question. Mike says, what do you think of naps? All right. So, Mike, I um, there's probably not a single day that goes by that I don't take at least a quick five-minute nap. All right. So, typically what I'll do is I'll sit in my little chair right here. I have a little reclining chair. I'll put some headphones in. And I have this little tool on my phone called Brainwave. I don't know if you've ever seen this little app. It's like four bucks. I actually did a video on it. It's someplace on YouTube. It's called the best $4, $4 I've ever spent. So I use this little app. They have a little setting called Power Nap, which is basically put some, put some binaural beats into your head. And I don't know the science behind it. All I can tell you is I get a pretty good nap. And I'll fall asleep. And when I wake up, I wake up. And, and sometimes, Mike, I'm not kidding you. I will fall asleep. And I'll wake up a minute later feeling refreshed. And sometimes I'll wake up 30 minutes later. Uh, but typically in the afternoon, sometime after lunch, I usually take a quick nap and then I'm back into it. Uh, and my most productive times, I've got about a 9 to 11 in the morning where I'm super productive. And then I usually have like a nice little two-hour productivity window after that nap. Boom. All right. So uh, good, good stuff. All right. So let me do a little uh, review and then I'm going to wrap up today. I think that was the last of the questions. If anybody else has any last minute questions, put them in there. Otherwise, I can answer them the next time we did this. This was 
how to dominate your day starting with your morning. We talked about weekly routine, daily routine, and then morning routine. There's more that I've got on my notes here, which we'll do in a part two. I don't mind because I got a part three coming up in the consulting series that we were doing. Uh, so now I'll have a part two on the morning series, which is totally great. Uh, if you haven't done so, please click that little button below that says like. That shows the world uh, that you're interested in this content. Anything that you say on social media is awesome too. Uh, thank you, Coach Zets, for the beautiful comment that you put on Instagram, man. I love that, dude. That was very nice of you to say the things that you did. Uh, if you didn't uh, see it, uh, look on my story in about 10 minutes. It'll be there, okay? Um, so the rest of this week really quickly, and then I'm going to wrap up with a little bit of motivation for today. Uh, tomorrow, uh, most likely tomorrow, these the, these Jonathan and Marquetta may switch, but we'll find out. Um, we're going to talk about Instagram hacks to explode your following. Marquetta's been helping me on Instagram. I have over 80,000 uh, fans on Instagram or followers or whatever you call it. She's been helping me really dial in my content there. Uh, Wednesday, Jonathan Sprinkles connecting after COVID, the new rules for building trust and closing sales. Thursday, how to raise and change a uh, train leaders who will change the world. And then Friday, the ask me anything show come to all the shows. Look, there's nuggets dropped all the time throughout these things that are going to be huge for you. And they're really going to help you to get more done. Here's my promise for you. Show up, invest 50 minutes in the show and then it's going to save you about five hours for the rest of the week as you implement faster. Because here's the goal. Look, this world needs changing. <laughs> this world needs your message, your story, your experience. Look, the world needs you. I mean, the world needs you to get out there and to be doing this. And so I committed to doing this show for about a three-month period of time every single day. I'm not going to do it forever, okay? But I'm going to do this long enough until we build the movement that we want to build, okay? Look, the world leaders have failed you in more ways than one. And it's your time to get out there and to really share your message, uh, whether it's health or nutrition or fitness or relationships or dieting or business or writing books or whatever it is. My goal is just to give you that extra little push uh, to get you out there and to get you motivated. Today, we just talked about a few productivity tips to get your week and your day uh, started right. Okay, tomorrow we're going to talk about social media. Maybe next week I'll come back and talk a little bit more about productivity. If you haven't subscribed to the show that's over here, you'll get a chance to do that. In just a second. In the meantime, just know, thank you, Nobby. He said Ed for Prez. I love that. <laughs> thank you, Edwin. I appreciate your comments as well. Uh, in the meantime, just know that I like you and I love you. You are going to do amazing things in the world, and I'm looking forward to being just a small part of that. Just all I ask is you remember me when you get all rich and famous. All right? So I will see you tomorrow for Ed Talks Live. Smile. It's getting better. It's getting better because either way, look, like I always said, it's either going to get worse and then we're going to get in charge or it's going to get better and then we're going to be in charge. Either way, we're going to end up in charge. <laughs> and I will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you, by, by the way. Today was a blast. Um, and uh, thank you for your comments and chat. I'll stick around for just a minute to say hello to you. This, my friends, was Ed Talks Live.